Well, Florida got um, beat by LSU. Not really surprised. I said after the Arkansas game, I didn't see a chance that Florida could win any of their final three games and to um, make a bowl game. You know, this game was a little bit more competitive uh, throughout the game than what I thought it would be. Um, I mean, of course, LSU's defense is not really that good. So, I mean, they're capable of keeping any football team in the game unless you're Army or Grambling. But then again, there's a certain statistic involving those two teams that would make Florida's performance in tonight against LSU look even worse. Um, Florida loses on the road to LSU, 35 to 52. Um, the game was actually back and forth throughout quite the throughout quite the night until around the um, mid to late fourth quarter when LSU eventually pulled away. Um, they scored a touchdown right out of the gate on their first possession. Not really too surprising. Um, Florida came back and scored a touchdown to tie it up se- uh, seven to seven. I think I believe it was Eugene Wilson who caught the who uh, caught a little shovel pass in front. Um, in motion from Graham Merson, got inside the end zone. Uh, then the Florida defense, even though they went, even though LSU marched down the field, um, it was able to stop LSU on defense. You know, with a um, with a goal line stand and goal line stand uh, to turn the ball over on downs, and then Florida turned the ball over to LSU after getting a couple of first downs, and then LSU would turn the football right back around. And then Florida would punt to LSU, and then they drove down the field for a field goal. And Florida punted the ball back to LSU. And then Jaden Daniels on a one-play, 85-yard drive, he did a read option, took the ball himself, and ran, outran everybody on Florida's defense into the end zone. Uh, number 18, I think that was – I don't know who that was, but there was a guy number 18 for uh, Florida. I don't know if it was Bryce Thornton or whatever. I'll have to look that up. But somebody took a horrible angle, and it put Jordan Costello in a bad situation because he's playing his side of the field, so he has to run across and keep up with Jaden Daniels, who it kind of, who kind of reminds you of RG three when he was at Baylor's. You know, I don't think he had RG kind of kind of. I think RG three had a had a d- stronger cannon of an arm, but speed wise, they're pretty similar. So that's kind of what he uh, reminded me of seeing uh, Jaden Daniels perform out there. And then after that play, the Florida defense was never the same again. You know, Florida, I thought maybe there was a possibility because Florida went and, uh, was able to score a touchdown right afterwards and make it a 17-14 game at halftime. I'm thinking maybe Florida does have a chance there. Uh, right out of the gate, three and out, of course. And then LSU capitalizes that, makes it 24-14. Florida scores a touchdown, 20, make it 24-21. Then they get a defense. Then they get a, excuse me, they get a turnover by special teams because they kick the ball up to LSU. They get a fumble recovery, go up 20-28-24. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a maybe there is a possibility that LSU could, you know, beat uh Florida. But I mean uh Florida could beat LSU, excuse me. And then that went away. They gave up a touchdown 31-28. Um uh, and then the Florida offense get kicked the ball back and punted the ball back to LSU. They go up 38-28, then they make it a 38-35 game, and then that was it because um, the defense for Florida just could not get the stops necessary to at least keep the defense in check. Um, I, I, I fully, I, I mean, I said it last week that I gave up on Billy Napier as a head coach, but I'm also giving up on this defensive staff. Um, this defense staff is, uh, the players, the defense is regressing to where it was in 2020, which is saying something because the 2020 defense never did perform this badly against LSU or any team for that matter as uh, the way Florida did tonight. Florida gave up over 700 total yards of defense, 20 yards of offense in this game. Um, not even Army or Grambling gave up that much. And if I'm correctly, I believe it was either Army or Grambling, but one of those two teams gave up 70 points to LSU. So even the team that gave up 70 points to LSU couldn't even uh, match Florida in that total lack of production. Um, just bad performances all around. And it calls into question, um, even if the, you know, because um, early, uh, earlier in the game, um, it broke. It came out that Jamonte Waller, uh, Florida's used to be Florida's four-star commit. He flipped over to Auburn. It kind of, it, it was kind of like an omen. Like he kind of saw the writing on the wall with this defensive staff, and that the players are not progressing, and it seemed like they're regressing, and the defense is getting worse and worse by the week, and that, um, you know, that you know, 
that made me think, you know, maybe I should go over to Auburn because uh, unlike Florida, Auburn can actually not only beat Arkansas, but actually beat the hell out of them like they were like, um, like they should have. And Auburn has nowhere near the talent roster that Florida has because uh, as Auburn fans know better than I would, Brian Harson's recruiting at Auburn was absolutely terrible. I mean, there was one, I think after he was fired in 2022, Auburn at the time had by 24-7 rank by two, 24-7 sports, they had Auburn as the worst recruiting class in the SEC, which is about a year after where Florida was um, with Dan Mullen. So, um, yeah, Florida doesn't have the talent level to where they need to be. They don't have the roster depth. But even if that was the case, are we confident that this staff can develop to where it needs to be? Because and not only develop the players, but can they even evaluate the players like we thought they could? Because if we're being dead honest, Billy Napier's transfer portal additions, Ricky Parasol, Monster Johnson, Osiris Torrens, Graham Mertz, and if you had to scratch the surface for a fifth one, maybe Micah Mazuka, because I don't think he's been that bad at right at the right guard position. I think he's at the perfect spot. I think he's a right guard, and that's where he needs to stay at. And I just don't think... Um, and they've they've done enough to su- supplement the roster. I mean, they have a lot of freshmen. They're gonna have to. They're playing a lot of freshmen for a reason. They know that they not at their roster wise. Um, they're gonna have another high influx of talent, even uh, recruiting wise. Even though Jamal Tawal is not gonna be a part of it, which a hey, good best of luck to him at War Eagle. I mean, I'm not gonna say, oh well, we don't need him now because he's no longer committed. But no, quite frankly, Florida needs all the help they can get roster wise. Um, Billy Napier is going to have to do a much better job in the transfer portal this upcoming year. And I think he needs to, um, if I was him, I think he should completely revamp the secondary. Uh, speaking of the secondary, Devin Moore was projected to start at, in the middle of the week, but he got a concussion in practice and he was out. And it seems like with Devin Moore, every time it seems like he's about to take the next step, he gets hurt and then his career just sputters after that. You know, last year he played a few games, started to look good, but then he had to miss the rest of the year with a shoulder injury. You know, he um, gets an interception against Tennessee, then he goes on the injury uh, list and he's out for several weeks. This week he's like, he's uh, projected to start and then he gets injured and now he's out. Uh, maybe he'll be back for the Missouri game. I'm not sure if it would make much difference with the way this defense is playing. Um, if they're going up against Missouri, and Missouri put up 36 points on Tennessee's deep on Tennessee today, they put up more points on um, Tennessee than Florida did, and their defense uh, shut Tennessee down, which is something Florida couldn't do. Um, and that was when the defense was actually playing well, and there was actually confidence in this defensive uh, coordinator, Austin Armstrong. You know, maybe I, I, Austin Armstrong's philosophy needs to really revamp, need to uh, amend his defensive philosophy. This feast of famine defense that he's um, coaching at uh, Florida, it's not going to work. You can get away with that at Southern Miss, but you're not going to get away with that in the SEC. Um, back to the transfer portal thing, they need to uh, do a better job. They need to revamp the secondary through the transfer portal and get in some – and give this uh, secondary some much-needed help. They also need to revamp the offensive line. I've already spoken about the offensive line coaches Apparently, there's a rumor that Rob Sale is going to be on his way out. I just get rid of them both because they're not progressing the players, the offensive linemen on the field. They're not doing a good job in recruiting. Um, the recruiting has been good at Florida at every position but the offensive line. So, and obviously, Billy Napier uh, needs an offensive coordinator who's going to call plays um, because Billy Napier, even though he had one of his better, even though I'll say he had one of his better play calling performances tonight, he still made a boneheaded decision and decided to run the ball on a third down and five when he's down by 10 in the middle of the fourth quarter, when actually less than in the middle of the fourth quarter when he had like six minutes to go. So I think, uh, okay, I, I still stand by what I said. Billy Napier needs to change offensive coordinator, needs to get an offensive coordinator, let him call the plays because he just doesn't do it. Though I will say the offense was not an issue tonight. I kind of gave. Offense majority of the blame in Arkansas because I actually thought the defense um, up until the end actually did a good job of keeping Florida in the game and getting necessary stops when they had to. They didn't do it tonight. And I get it. It's LSU's offense. I mean, this is LSU offense is almost on the level of where they were in 2019 with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and Clyde Edwards Hilaire and all that. I, I, I get all that. But come on, you could have did just a little bit better. I mean, I mean. Not only was the defense bad, but the but they didn't adjust. They didn't have a quarterback spy on on, on Jaden Daniels. 
Um, you had there was a bunch of plays were on running plays where defense alignment were like overshooting their gaps and they were like running themselves out of the play. And the LSU, and sometimes the LSU offensive alignment wouldn't even have to um, push them out the way. They would just basically just let them um, shoot their wad, so to speak, and then just get in the guy's way because he's already moved himself out of position. And it caught Florida several times. And, you know, either, you know, I I think they need to get a new defense coordinator. I don't care if it's going to be a third defense coordinator in three years. Uh, this um, formation that Billy Napier has had where he's had four down uh, linemen and uh, two linebackers and a edge guy on on the side, it, it's, it, that formation has not been working. Um, I think maybe... Uh, I would not that I would wish somebody for it to get fired, but if for anybody else outside of my own team to get fired, but if the Baylor Bears, who are three and seven right now, if they want, if they choose to part ways with Dave Aranda, uh, hopefully Billy Napier would be smart enough to maybe make a call to give Dave Aranda, but he cannot bring back. I don't know if bringing back Austin Armstrong as the defense coordinator is really a good idea because his philosophy of feast or famine, you know, be so aggressive that you're willing to give up some big plays. For, to the offense that you'll get some big plays on defense. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but quite frankly, I'm not really sure if any, uh, a lot of stuff surrounding this staff right now is going to work, but, you know, um, all in all, um, five and five. I said uh, I didn't see Florida making a bowl game after losing to Arkansas, and right now they're proving me right. They only have two games left. They need one victory, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, the only saving, the only silver lining is that the final game against FSU will be at home in the swamp. But if you can't beat Arkansas at home, how can I expect you to beat Florida State at home? Florida State's going to eat our secondary alive.